Okay, thank you very much for introduction and hi everyone. My name is Payab, PhD student from Rochester Institute of Technology, and I will present deep fingerprinting undermining website fingerprinting defenses with deep learning. And this is a joint work with my colleague Mosen from U of Texas at Arlington, Mark from KU Levens, and my advisor Matt Wright. I think first of all, I would like to ask you the simple question: Is there anyone in this room believe that? The regular web browsing service can protect your privacy over the internet. Please raise your hand. Okay, now we are in the same page. Okay, so because without a good protection, the attacker can simply look at the IP addresses in your encrypted stream and can easily link your identity to the websites that you are visiting. And with this information, the attacker can learn a lot of your private life. For example, your personal preferences. Your political viewpoints, and even use them to discredit your reputation. To protect user privacy over the internet, a series of privacy-enhancing technologies have been proposed over time. But the one that is most widely used with more than millions of users now today is Tor, and this makes Tor become the de facto tool to protect user privacy over the internet. So in Tor, the user has to create. An encrypted circuit containing the guard, the middles, and the exit nodes, and with this design, Tor provides the compelling property in which each particular node or location only know which node gave it data and which node it is giving data to. For example, if the attacker is monitoring the traffic between the users and the guard nodes, so the attacker will only know who is the users and who is the guard node. And as you can see, that the guard node is not the actual website, so the attacker fails to learn user internet behavior. Unfortunately, the encrypted stream between user and guard node still leaks side channel information, such as packet statistics, and this information is unique for each website, which allow the attacker to use this information to train machine learning classifier to predict the website that. The user may visit, and we call this exploitation as website fingerprinting attack. We also assume that website finger with hackers is a local passive adversary in which it can be anyone who can access to the network communication between the users and the guard node. For example, he can be the one who can intercept the user wireless connection, the one who gain access to user uh, modem routers, the internet service providers. The, the autonomous systems, a local if droppers, or he can be the guard node himself. So, in order to perform the attack, the attacker has to first train the classifier by visiting the websites that he would like to keep an eye on, in order to gather network traffic example, and use this example to train machine learning classifier, and in this case, we call website fingerprinting classifier. And when the attacker would like to perform the attack. He just intercept the network traffic from the users, feed it into the classifier that he previously prepared from the previous step to predict the website that the user may visit. However, is it impossible to train the classifier to recognize all websites around the world? So the hacker need to determine the set of limited website that he want to monitor, and we call this set of website as monitor websites. On the other hand, we call Other any websites out of the modern ones as the unmodern website, and there are two assumptions to that used to evaluate the performance of the attack. First, we call it closed world scenario. In this scenario, the user assumed to visit only the modern websites, so the attacker has to be able to identify which website that the user had just visited, and we measure the performance of the attack by using the accuracy of the attacks. So this scenario is considered to be unrealistic because, in fact, the user can arbitrarily visit any website, right? However, the previous work has still reported the accuracy of the uh, attacks because it can be uh, used to initially measure the performance of the classifier. On the other hand, in open world scenario, user can arbitrarily visit any website all around the world, and the attacker has to be able to recognize user traffic as monitors or unmonitored websites. This scenario is considered to be more realistic and, of course, more difficult for the attackers. And due to the sizes of the monitors and unmonitored websites that are heavily imbalanced, so the recent works in website fingerprinting have recommended to use precision and recall to prevent baseless fallacy. 
So in the next part, let me talk a little bit about the previous work in website fingerprinting attacks and defense. So let's start with website fingerprint attacks uh, using handcrafted feature. So the handcrafted feature in this case refer to the fact that the attacker needs to perform feature engineering to decide to set up effective feature that used to train the classifier. And the previous work, including uh, Kenyon by Wang et al., Kimu by Pashenko et al., and K fingerprinting by Hayes and Denison, can effectively achieve over 90% accuracy. So in response to these effective attacks, website fingerprinting defense have been proposed. The basic mechanism of the defense is to add dummy packets and or delay the packets to confuse the classifier. However, to perform the defense, another key factor that needs to be seriously considered is the overhead to the system. We have to ensure that these mechanisms will not add unacceptable bandwidth overhead and more importantly, the latency overhead, which is the direct cause to the user in the Tor system that is already slower than the regular browsing. And there are two lightweight website fingerprint defense that could be deployed in Tor. The first one is the WTA pad by Huawei et al. So the basic approach of this defense is to detect the large gap between the bursts and sophisticatedly pad dummy packets to distort the burst pattern. And this defense requires a moderate bandwidth overhead without additional delay and can effectively reduce the accuracy of the attack to less than 20%. More importantly, the Tor developers show their interest in deploying WTA pad in Tor. So the second defense is walkie-talkie by Wang and Goldbergs. The concept of this defense is to add dummy packets to make two or more different websites look exactly the same in terms of their packet sequence. For example, website A and website B are modeled to look exactly the same as you can see from the last packet sequence. And when the classifier trying to predict the last packet sequence, there is uncertainty that this packet sequence can come from either website A and website B and ultimately confuse the classifier. This defense requires low bandwidth and low latency overhead and can effectively reduce the accuracy of the attacks to less than 30%. So up until now, WTA pad and walkie-talkie are the main candidates to be implemented in Tor. So in the next part, let's take a look at the previous work in website fingerprint attacks using deep learning. So recently, uh, Rimmer et al. showed that deep learning can be used to automate feature engineering process. They apply three different deep learning techniques, including stack denoising autoencoder or SDAE, convolutional neural networks, or CNN, long short-term memory, or LSTM, and compare them with the QMU attacks. The results show that CNN, SDAE, and QMU consistently perform best with 95 to 97% accuracy against non-defended traffic in close world scenario. However, there are key challenges that still remain interesting. First, we observe that the CNN architecture used in Rimmer et al. work is based on the early proposed CNN model and similar to the AlexNet model back to, to, back to 2012. And we learned that there have been improvement in terms of the CNN architectures over a period of time with better and better classification performance. This motivated us to apply this improvement to create better models with more effective performance. But most importantly, the previous work did not evaluate the performance of the attacks against website fingerprinting defense. And this raised the important questions that whether or not the model that is effective in network traffic without defenses will be still effective against the network traffic with defense. And as you can see from these figures, we have no doubt that the CNN models can effectively perform the classification task with the clean inputs. However, what will be happening if the inputs are intentionally distorted, for example, in website fingerprinting defense? And these are the key challenges that we would like to answer. So in our work, we develop a novel website fingerprinting attacks called D-fingerprinting or the DF attacks based on the CNN model architecture. These CNN model have applied many improvement techniques from the previous literature, especially in image recognition. However, due to the time constraint, let me give you just some examples of improvements. So the key improvements come from the heart of the CNN model's architectures. As you can see from this figure, when the model goes deeper, 
it will learn the input from low level features such as edge curve line to higher level features such as objects and this also happens to network traffic as well moreover the numbers of fields on each convolutional layer should be increased when the networks go deeper to allow the deeper layers to effectively learn more valid feature representation and based, and based on this concept we are convinced that to create the df attack model that can handle the defended traffic effectively if the model is deep enough with glowing numbers of filters along with appropriate set of hyperparameters the features that are intentionally concealed by website fingerprint defense will be finally extracted and learned by the classifier. Well, in these figures, we would like to show the comparison between our DF models and the AWF model, which is the model that was previously proposed by Rimmer et al. Both models are basically designed based on the CNN architectures. And it's important to note that the AWF model actually works very well in non-defended network traffic. So we only want to demonstrate the different architectures of the DF model compared to the, the AWF models that can eff effectively and substantially affect the performance of the attacks, especially in the defended network traffic. So let me give you some of the key differences by starting with the basic block design. So the basic block design as shown in the red box is the groups of the layers, including the convolutional layers, activation function, max pooling, and so on. And this basic block will be repeated until uh, finish of the uh, models. So you can see that in our DF model, the basic block contains two consecutive convolutional layers. And in each convolutional layers, we apply batch normalization that can effectively improve the learning process of the model. Moreover, we always apply dropout right after the max pooling to prevent overfitting. In contrast, the AWF model, they use the early proposed CNN architecture in which each basic box contains only one convolutional layers and end up with max pooling, as you can see from this figure. Moreover, in our DF model, we also apply two fully connected layers along with the batch normalization and dropout before the prediction layer to improve the classification performance and prevent overfitting in which AWF models doesn't have. In terms of the number of filters in the convolutional layers, as you can see that the DF model follows the modern CNN architecture that normally increases the size of the numbers of filters when the model scores deeper. And this will allow the model to better learn more representations of the features. In contrast, the numbers of filters in the AWF models is fixed in all convolutional layers. And finally, the depth of the models. It turns out that our DF model is approximately three times deeper than the AWF models. And well, there are other differences in terms of the model architecture between these two models that I cannot present here due to the time constraint. So please refer to the full detail of comparisons and the intuitive explanation about each improvement in our paper. So in the next part, we perform experimental evaluation to compare our DF attacks to other state-of-the-art website finger with tags. The first result demonstrates the performance of website finger with tags against the non-defended dataset in closed world scenario. And as you can see that the DF attack could attain 98.3% accuracy, which is better than other attacks and higher than any previously reported in the literature. In the defended dataset with walkie-talkie in closed world scenario, the DF, the DF attack can perform best compared to other attacks and can manage up to 49.7% accuracy because of the basic mechanism of the defense that aim to make two or more different websites look exactly the same. And this render the theoretical maximum accuracy to be at most 50%. And as you can see that the DF attack can mostly reach to this point. A surprising result here is that the DF attack is the only one attack that could effectively achieve over 90% accuracy against the beauty attack, which is the first time that this defense is potentially undermined, even if we already added 64% of dummy packets. Moreover, in the beauty attack, the results also show that the DF attack can significantly perform better than other website finger attacks. And if you closely look at the gap performance between the DF and the AWF attacks, 
which are both applied to CNN architecture. You can see that the DF attack with different design architectures can significantly perform better than the AWF one. And this confirms that the carefully designed architecture plays an important role to the attack performance, especially the network traffic with defenses. And then we perform our evaluation in more realistic open world scenario. Let's start with the attacks against non-defended dataset. So this figure demonstrates the performance of the attack with precision and recall. So the meaning of this graph could be simply infer that the closer to the top right, the better the performance of the attack is. As you can see that the DF model here could perform better than other website finger with tags as demonstrated by the purple line here. So let's take a closer look at the result in website finger with tags against the multi pad in OpenWorld. As you can see that there is a reduction in both precision and recall in all website thing with hacks. However, the DF attacks still perform best and even more significantly better compared to other attacks. Moreover, with high precision and recall that the DF attack can achieve, this can be inferred that the attacker can effectively identify that a user has visited a particular modern website with very high confidence which is directly dangerous to the privacy of the user. So based on the result that I have just presented to you, it seems like walkie-talkie is the good candidate to be deployed in Tor, right? However, we provide some investigation and discussion about walkie-talkie that can be used as a consideration for the future works. First, we perform top-end prediction. The reason that we are interested in this investigation because the basic mechanism of the walkie-talkie is to make the real websites and the decoy website look exactly the same, right? To confuse the classifier. The question is that, is it possible that the attacker can scope down the possible website that the user may visit? Surprisingly, the results show that we only need top two prediction in the DF attack and could reach up to 98.44% accuracy. This likely means that the DF attack can correctly select the real websites and the decoy website. Well, we still need to randomly guess between them, right? However, it could scope down the potential candidates and the attackers can use other information to make more precise prediction in this case. Moreover, in terms of the deployability, walkie-talkie requires the database to collect and distribute network traffic patterns used to perform the defense to all clients and tunnels. Moreover, this defense can only apply to static websites effectively. And furthermore, it's required to change the tunnel network communication protocol from full duplex to half duplex. We could substantially add 31% extra latency. And this is the direct, co direct cost, as I said before, to the end user performance in Tor that is already slower than the regular browsing. So this deployability issue really need further investigation to overcome before deploying walkie-talkie in Tor. So in conclusion, we propose a novel website finger attack called defingerprinting or the DF attack that leverage carefully designed in architectures. And this attack can perform best in non-defended network traffic in both closed world and open world scenario. Moreover, we can now answer the key challenges that whether or not website finger attacks that are effective in, non, in, in network traffic without defense will be still effective against the network traffic with defense. The answer is yes, with the DF attacks. And we show that the DF attack could effectively achieve 90% accuracy against the beauty pad, the defense that is the main candidate to be deployed in Tor. And motivated by our fighting, Tor developer already started revising the deployments of the BTF pad in Tor. Finally, the source code of the DF attacks and the dataset are publicly available now in this URL. So if you are interested in our work, please feel free to contact me and my colleagues. And now I'm happy to take questions for all of you. Other questions? Please come to the microphones for the video. So if there are no questions, probably you'll get inspired.
<clears throat> have you looked into the internals of your um, of your model of your CNN model? I thought probably you can give more efficient ways to morph one web page into the equivalence class of a different web page if you for countermeasures. Probably if you look at your um, internal representation, um, the, you can find a way to um, yeah morph one, uh, give recommendations like put this image. Um, down here or change it a little bit to make it to the right size or uh, yeah like I think this is very very good questions here like uh, actually we are working on that uh, trying to learn what happening inside uh, in terms of you know what actually the the, the model uh, used to predict what they predict and uh, based on that uh, we we can possibly develop the defense that fix from that part, fix from that part to conceal uh, the what the CNN model used to predict to conceal the 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 the, 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 the fingerprint. Yep. Thanks. Hi, just a really simple one. Um, how stable are your results? Did you just um, apply the approach once and get your accuracies, or did you I don't know average over several attempts? Uh, we we follow the uh, we we run many times for sure. We run many times for sure, and the 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 variance of the result is very very less. Yeah, very very less, and uh, yeah, that that's a very very good question. That you know, like uh, we we make sure that the the, the, the this accuracy is is represent uh the the, the actual ac uh, accuracy. Yep. Um. So um, you're. The various fingerprinting uh, attacks were, uh, as you, you showed, more effective in the closed world than the open world. Um, how does that degrade as the clo closed world expands? So say if you did, say, the 100 or 1,000 most common websites, uh, would you still see a significant difference, or at that point would it be effectively an open world? You mean, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get you. mean I, like... Sorry. So um, in, in your closed world, um, it seemed like you were, say, comparing two websites. Yep. Um, and you had very high accuracy at differentiating between them. If you had, say, 100 websites in that closed world, um, it, would that um, still have a significantly greater accuracy than in the open world? OK, to, to answer your question, we test with 95 different websites in Crossword. But but the point is like when when you increase the size of, of the Crossword to be larger, right. uh, it, it's of course some some way somehow affect the accuracy because it, there is a chance that some website that very very similar mm -hmm. to each other and that could be collide to each other and make the classifier to be like a little more confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can 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 possibly happen. I think this is the the reasons that that the open world is still more harder because when we're talking about the open world, we are talking not just within the thing that we know, right? We are talking about other things that we don't know. And right. and you know like websites all around the world can somehow some way have very similar patterns, very similar page. Yep. Right. Yep. yep. What was the representation of your packet traces that you fed into your classifier? Uh, we use just packet directions. Uh, plus one, minus one, outgoing, incoming. Just that's, that's it. it. So that's no it, yes. notion of time. Or no anything. time. Yes. Okay.